The time has finally come to talk about it. Hello and welcome to The Rock Record. I'm Jess. Let's talk rocks and failure. The introduction to this video was supposed to be that I am standing on top of the world's tallest mountain, but no, it's not Everest. Welcome to The Rock Record and welcome to Mauna Kea. However, we didn't quite make it up to the top. Well, we didn't get to go to the top of Mauna Kea. Uh, we were acclimatizing and we were told to acclimatize for 30 minutes. And we got here at 5.35 and they closed the road at 6. So when we went through, through the line at 6.05, it was closed. Let's rewind a little bit. Welcome to Mauna Kea. You might be wondering how this can be the world's tallest mountain when it's clearly not as high above sea level as Everest. Well, that's where things get interesting. Mauna Kea rises an astonishing 33,500 feet from its base on the ocean floor to its peak. That's more than 4,000 feet taller than Mount Everest if measured from base to peak. What we're standing on is just the tip of an enormous volcanic mountain. But Mauna Kea isn't just impressive for its height. This mountain is a geological treasure trove, telling a story of volcanic evolution, glacial periods, yes, even in Hawaii, and the dynamic forces that shape our planet. Let's dig into the fascinating geology of Mauna Kea. So Mauna Kea is a shield volcano, much like its neighbors Mauna Loa and Kilauea. It is one of five volcanoes here on the big island of Hawaii. It is the third oldest of the volcanoes, but it is the highest. Scientists estimate that Mauna Kea is between 600,000 and 1.5 million years old. That might sound ancient, but in geologic time, that's really young. Like its neighbors, Mauna Kea began its life as an active shield volcano. It built up its massive bulk through countless eruptions of fluid lava. The shield building stage lasted for about 800,000 years. Imagine the scale of these eruptions, layer upon layer of lava, slowly building a mountain from the ocean floor. But Mauna Kea has evolved beyond this shield building stage. We can see evidence of this evolution in the types of lava we find here. The oldest visible rocks found near sea level in deep gulches on the northeast flank are about 200,000 to 250,000 years old. These mark the transition from the shield stage to what geologists call the post-shield stage. During this post-shield stage, Mauna Kea's eruptions changed character. Instead of the fluid lava that built the shield, we start to see more viscous lava. This thicker lava created shorter, stubbier flows and built the numerous cinder cones we see dotting the landscape around us. These changes in lava chemistry are why Mauna Kea has a much steeper and more irregular shape compared to its still active neighbor, Mauna Loa. Geologists have identified two main phases of post-shield volcanism on Mauna Kea. The first, known as the Hamakua Volcanics, occurred between 250,000 and 70,000 years ago. These eruptions produced about 850 cubic kilometers of lava. That's enough to fill more than 340 million Olympic-sized swimming pools. The second phase, the La Pahoehoe Volcanics, began about 65,000 years ago and continued until as recently as 4,000 years ago. This phase is responsible for the most of the dramatic cinder cones and rugged a'a lava flows we see at the summit today. But Mauna Kea's story isn't just about fire, it's also about ice. Surprisingly, this tropical volcano has been shaped by glaciers. Between about 180,000 years ago and the present, the summit of Mauna Kea experienced at least three episodes of glaciation. We can see evidence of this icy past all around the volcano. Glacially polished rock surfaces, moraines, and unique features formed by the interaction of lava and ice. Imagine it, fiery lava meeting glacial ice, creating steam explosions and forming unique geological features. This interplay between fire and ice is part of what makes Mauna Kea so special and scientifically valuable. As a geologist, Mauna Kea is super cool, but it's not the only reason that people visit. It's not just a geological wonder, it's also one of the world's premier sites for astronomical observation. The reasons for this are closely tied to the mountain's geology and location. Mauna Kea's height and isolated location in the middle of the Pacific Ocean means it has some of the clearest, darkest skies on the planet. The smooth, gradual slope of this shield volcano allows trade winds to flow around it with minimal turbulence, creating exceptionally stable air above the summit. Combined with the thin, dry air at this altitude, these conditions make Mauna Kea an astronomer's paradise. The summit is home to over a dozen world-class telescopes, collectively known as the Mauna Kea Observatories. These instruments have played a crucial role in our understanding of the universe, 
from discovering exoplanets to studying distant galaxies. It is important to note that Mauna Kea isn't just a scientific site for geology and astronomy. It's also a deeply significant cultural location. In Hawaiian, it's known as Mauna Awakea, or the Mountain of Wakea, named after a progenitor of the Hawaiian people. For many native Hawaiians, Mauna Kea is a sacred place central to their culture and spiritual beliefs. Now, if you're planning a visit to Mauna Kea, there are a few important things to keep in mind so you don't get stuck at the visitor center like we did. The visitor information center, or the viz behind me here, is located at 9,200 feet of elevation. It's not only a great place to start your journey, but it's also a must stop for all visitors wanting to summit Mauna Kea. It offers educational exhibits, programs, and a short hike, which you can kind of see behind me here. It also offers information about the potential risks of summiting Mauna Kea. After all, it is the world's largest mountain and there are some potential health risks. The summit of Mauna Kea is at 13,803 feet above sea level. That's over two and a half miles. The low oxygen and altitude can cause altitude sickness, which can be fatal. Always acclimatize at lower elevations before heading to the summit. And pay attention to how your body feels. It's also not recommended to take children under the age of 13 for this reason. So even though we didn't get to summit, which is a huge bummer, we did still get some great stargazing in. And it was really amazing to feel the elevation at the Viz and get a glimpse of Mauna Kea's fiery power. Out here with a bunch of other people on the hike that I said I wasn't gonna do, uh, watching the sunset. So you're at 9,500 feet. As we wrap up our visit, take a moment to appreciate the incredible forces that shaped this mountain. From its fiery birth on the ocean floor to the icy touch of glaciers, from violent volcanic eruptions to the delicate balance that makes it perfect for stargazing, Mauna Kea is a testament to the dynamic nature of our planet and the beauty that hides in the stones and the sky. This massive volcano gives us a unique opportunity to study geological processes, push the boundaries of astronomical research, and connect with ancient cultural traditions. It truly is a mountain like no other. Thank you for joining us on The Rock Record. For more Hawaii adventures, feel free to check out our other videos on Hawaii Volcanoes National Park and, of course, Hawaii's famous beaches. Remember, whether you're standing on a beach, in a city, or on top of the world's tallest mountain, there's always an incredible story written in the rocks beneath your feet. Until next time, keep exploring.